Greetings fellow South African learners. My name is Mututuze Jamini. I am a lecturer at Ehlan at College. I am based at Neil Spread Campus. The program that we'll be offering is electrical infrastructure and construction. This, and the subject is electronic control and digital electronics MQF level four. So our topic today is still on what we call fundamentals of electronics, but the module is what we call silicon controlled rectifier. Silicon, silicon controlled rectifier. Short we abbreviated as SCR, not SRC, I don't want to eat away. Surely abbreviated as SCR, Silicon Controlled Rectifier. It's simple. Remember, we have what we call semiconductor physics. That's where it all starts. Where we have our doping, we have N, we've got P, and then we join them, we form a diode, and then we join two diodes, we form a transistor. We join two transistors now, and then we are forming what we call a thyristor. So it is a member of the semiconductor PNPN called thyristors. It's a three terminal, just like a transistor. It's a three terminal, three junction this time. Transistors have got two junctions. You, you just got three junctions with four layer and it's a switching device. It is mostly used in or widely used in power control. This is because of their certain design, which allows this device to handle currents of more than a thousand amps, and it can handle voltages of up to 1,000 volts. So you can see why it is commonly used in electronics, more especially in power switching. So it is also called used in low power electronics. For example. Your light dimmers at all. The speed of your hair dryers, you ladies. It is also used in power supply to protect what we call over voltage. So that is where you have an SCR as an application. It is also known as a device that acts like a true electronic switch, like a true electronic switch. It also allows current to flow in one direction once it is switched on. It can be used in switching both DC, which is direct current, and AC, alternating current. Well, it can also change, like the word says, rectifier. It can also rectify or change AC to DC at the same time controlling the amount of power that is fed onto a load. So you see, it has got a combination of a rectifier and a transistor. So let's look into a simple circuit symbol of a silicon or construction of a silicon rectifier. We said it's two transistors connected. One is in the PNP, let me start with the PNP. This is a construction symbol of a SCR, PNP, and the other one, I talked of two transistors being joined when I started this lesson. So we can have one to be in the PNP mode, the other one on an NPN. So this is a basic combination of two transistors, two transistors, one in PNP mode, the other one in an NPN mode. It is not all the, remember we say it's a three terminal device. So we have a terminal here, we have a terminal there, we also have a terminal there. We call this terminal the anode, denoted by the letter A. We call this terminal the cathode. The cathode denoted by the letter K. 
Not that I don't know how to spell cathode, it's the denotation we use. It's a K. So, the anode is said to be the positive side. The cathode is said to be the negative side. And then we have this one extra terminal, which is called the gate terminal. Gate, denoted by letter G. Now, let's see. We can also have a circuit symbol, since this is a construction symbol. We can also have a circuit symbol. Or it can be minimized if sometimes some other textbooks you will find it written like this. Where you have your P, N, P, N. Remember we said it's a four layer P, N, P, N device. You still have your anode, you still have your cathode, you still have your gate. You will see that you have your anode. If you mix these two, you will see that N will come to N, P will come to P. So you'll form one slice of P, one slice of N. So we now say this is another alternative way of representing an SCR as a construction symbol. Then we also have what we call the circuit symbol of the SCR. Where we still have the anode and we still have the cathode and we still have the gate. Construction symbol, an alternative of a construction symbol and then we have our circuit symbol. So, these are some of the diagrams which will stay in your head because they are frequently asked in examinations. The construction symbol of an SCR or the circuit symbol of an SCR. Please write in full everything. So, now, how does an, oper a, a, a SCR, an SCR operate? It has got what we call operating modes which are four. Namely, reverse blocking, reverse conduction, forward blocking, and forward conduction. Let me just write that down so that you don't forget it. Reverse blocking, oh I don't. So we have these four modes. Reverse blocking, reverse blocking, then we have reverse conduction, we have forward blocking, we also have forward conduction. Well, let's dissect each of these modes one by one. We shall start with what we call reverse blocking. So in a reverse blocking mode, I'll simply draw one SCR and then I'll keep on changing the, the polarities. So let me just have one SCR here and then I'll keep on changing the polarities. One, two, one, two. N, P, N, P, N. Okay, let me just use the P, N. P, N, P, this side, so that we become constant. And N, P, N. So, this is our SCR. This is our SCR without any external voltage. So, it simply means that it is of no use. So now let's apply a voltage. Let's apply a voltage across this SCR. We shall apply a voltage across this SCR, uh, which looks like this for now. For now, which looks like this. And I shall call this voltage V across the anode and cathode. Remember, this is anode and this is cathode. So, Let's start with reverse blocking. In reverse blocking, you can see that, let me say here, we still have no voltage, the gate is open. No voltage on the gate. So, in reverse blocking, you can see that 
If I were to apply my supply like this into the device, it simply tells me that now my positive, which is the anode, is facing the negative of the supply, and my negative, which is the cathode, is facing the positive of the supply. So it simply tells me that the anode is positive, is negative with respect to the cathode, which is something you can say that something uh, fishy about that. So it simply means that, remember we said with junctions, I'll call this junction one, I'll call this junction two, I'll call this junction three. Where they meet, they become a junction. So it simply tells us, according to the laws of the semiconductors, if we have that, it simply tells us that the only sensible or forward bias junction will only be junction two. This will be seen positive to negative, negative to positive, which is reversed. Only junction two sees negative to negative and positive to positive. So it simply tells us in reverse uh, blocking state, J2 shall be reverse bias. That's one condition. It shall be reverse bias. And it simply says that uh, the anode I, the anode, okay, let me write everything, the anode is negative with respect to the cathode. That's a condition of reverse blocking. Okay, it also says that if we are saying this is the condition, the device is less likely to conduct, less likely to conduct. So we normally say there is no current, no current flowing through. Okay, but in practice we have what we call leakage current, very small amount of current in the order of Emma microamps, microamps. Is a very, very, very minimal current. So in that, we say the device is non-conductive. So we cannot expect in a reverse blocking mode the device to conduct. But if you say now you have your reverse conduction, which is the second condition, your reverse conduction, your reverse conduction, reverse, Conduction, the reverse conduction mode, allows us to say, if I were to increase this voltage, VAK, and keep on increasing this voltage, there will be a point, there will be a point where this device can no longer handle this voltage. And that point is called the reverse, uh, what we call the reverse block uh, breakdown voltage, denoted by VPR. There will be a reverse uh, break of a voltage. We are saying that this device has got a certain limit. Once you drive this voltage to this point that is where we say there is reverse breakdown, this device will now start to conduct in the opposite direction, which is not uh, advised. So, if you continue until you, you do that, they normally say an avalanche breakdown will start to okay and that can drive the device to what we call thermal runaway. Heat will then destroy the device. So you make sure that, or you ensure that, even if you were to connect the device in a reverse bias mode or in a reverse blocking mode, do not exceed the level of break over voltage under reverse. The second condition or the third condition we talked about is forward forward blocking mode blocking mode what do we mean by forward blocking mode it's simply a change in this voltage let me just do that forward blocking mode now we have our VAK in that for a format where this is positive and this is negative so you can now see in your forward blocking mode your anode, for one, your anode is positive with respect to your cathode. Condition number one, under forward blocking mode. If we look into the device, once we look into that, we have got junction one, junction two, and junction three. So, if we look into the device, 
you would you would observe that junction one and junction three will be in a forward bias mode. Why are we saying so? Junction three has got its n to the negative, p to the positive. That forward bias is junction three. Junction one has got its p to the positive, n to its negative. That forward bias is junction one. So you now see that we have junction one and junction three under forward bias mode. So, it simply says that under these conditions, if you've got now more junctions forward biased, a current, a leakage current again will flow. And in this case, it will no longer be in micro amps, it will be a little bit bigger than the one under reverse blocking mode. It will be in the order of milli amps. So, how does forward conduction Okay, forward, forward, conduction. Forward conduction will simply, okay, remember that the device is already starting to conduct, it's already in milliamp state. So it's an easy task. So what we need to do is just to apply a positive pulse vol uh, voltage. We need to have a positive, a positive pulse voltage in the gate. Once we have the positive pulse in the, in the, uh, in the gate, it simply says now junction, junction two must also be forcefully uh, be forward biased. So once junction two is forcefully forward biased, current will now start to flow from the anode to the cathode because now all the junctions after this gate voltage are forward biased. So current will start to flow easily from its anode to the cathode. Secondly, without even the gate, this method, the first method is called the gate turn on. The second method is, even without the gate, without the gate, we can increase this voltage VAK. That is to say, we can increase VAK to above breakover voltage, VPO. Okay, so that is to say, if we increase, we can continue increasing this voltage even without the gate. If we continue increasing this voltage, a certain point again on the forward bias mode, a certain level of voltage on the bias mode, which is known as the breakover voltage, will be reached. And this simply means that all these electrons will be pushed towards this junction so that it forcefully forward biases this, uh, this junction two, which is uh, in a reverse bias mode. So a break of a point will be reached and an avalanche will start to occur. Then the device will start to conduct and go to what we call the holding current value. So once you switch it on, this device will start to have some kind of what we call regenerative feedback and a value of a current will be reached known as holding current, IH, holding current. Once you switch it on, it will go to regenerative feedback and a value of, certain level value of current known as IH will be reached, which is the holding current. So the definition of holding current is simple. It is the minimum we normally say it is the minimum current needed by the SCR to remain in a conduction state. IH, again I repeat, it is the holding current. The minimum current which is needed by the SCR to remain in a conductive state. I talked of regenerative feedback. Let's see how we achieve this regenerative feedback. Let's explain what regenerative feedback is. How does the device go to regenerative feedback? I will use the two transistor modally to, up to, to, uh, to explain regenerative feedback. So, let me 
draw the transistors. We have one in a PNP set up. One in an NPN mode set up. So this is our anode and this is our cathode and this is our gate. So this I'll call transistor one, this I'll call transistor two. So if I were to apply a forward voltage across there, let me just do this. This simply tells me that the anode is positive with respect to the cathode and that condition we said it's forward blocking mode. So if the anode is positive with respect to the cathode then we're in a forward blocking mode. Now let's see. It means our device is actually waiting for a pulse from the gate. So let's say we apply a positive pulse here. It will introduce a certain current which is known as the base current onto transistor 2. So if transistor 2 receives the base current, it switches on. When it switches on, it must draw current from this supply through transistor 1 back there to the collector and emitter back to the supply. So you will see that your current will be moving from this in this way when we switch on transistor 1. So it simply says that we now have IC according to transistor 2. And IC according to transistor 2 is the same as IP according to transistor 1. Once we have, once we have, once we have a, a, a pulse or a current flowing through the base of the transistor, the transistor will switch on. So meaning that even transistor 2, just because of the current flowing from the base of transistor 2, drawn by transistor 1, will now find itself drawing more current from the supply. I wish I had another different marker for now. So another signal will be going down there into this transistor, back into the supply. See now, these two transistors, once this switch is on, it draws current through its, the base of transistor 2. When the current of base of transistor 2, transistor 1 switches on the transistor 1, uh, transistor 1, this shall also happen. Remember, it's a PNP. It means current will be flowing from the emitter to the collector, down to the transistor 2. So you can see that even if I can remove this terminal gate voltage, there is now current flowing through this device. So we normally call that the regenerative feedback. That is to me, once we switch an SCR on, once we switch an SCR on, the gate loses control over the device. The gate is no longer relevant once we switch on. So if you have your switch on method here, once you switch it on, it will start to draw current from the supply in this fashion which I've already explained. So it will keep on switching itself on, on with the current where the gate, even when the gate is no longer there. So we normally call that uh, kind of process a regenerative feedback. So you can see that there are two ways or two methods of switching on an SCR. One is by the gate turn on voltage. Two is by reaching, uh, reaching the breakover point by increasing anode to cathode voltage to the breakover voltage. So, your typical examination questions on these uh, kind of devices will be the definitions. Like you've always, what is IH? Define IH, the modes of conduction, which we've already explained. The circuit symbols, the equivalent circuits, they might simply ask you, represent an SCR in a two transistor model circuit. You can draw the SCR in that way. Explain how you can switch on an SCR. Give methods of switching on an SCR. There are also methods of switching off an SCR, but due to time constraint, we shall look into them on the next lesson, which is, 
which will be uh, given on some other day. So for now, this is all you need to know about SCR for what conduction uh, and reverse conduction. And for further information, you can go into our website, which is www.eshanzenicollege.co.za or you can find us on our platforms, which is uh, our media platforms, which is our Facebook page and our Twitter page, Eshanzeni College. I thank you.